Welcome everyone. My name is Srinivasan from Skilllink. Today we are going to talk about powertrain arrangement. Have you ever wondered why gearbox cost is always higher than the engine cost? Right? Whenever you try to purchase a motorcycle or you try to give service to the uh, your engine and the gearbox, you seems to always see gearbox service is also as equally important than your engine service right we're going to start looking at the details that goes behind having a higher price for gearbox compared to engine right so the technical detail goes here the biggest problem with the engine is it can only provide maximum torque at a very particular rpm we call this band uh, our power band so this power band is the rpm we could say ideally between 3000 to 4000 rpm is the range in which you tend to get the maximum amount of efficiency from your engine you might have noticed it right whenever you accelerate your vehicle from the first gear to the corresponding gears to that towards end of your final gear you will be able to experience the fullest power from the engine this is the biggest drawback to hide this drawback of engine we set up gearbox how we are going to do it we are going to have all the four gears in the power band right so it's kind of you know you look at it it's very narrow right so we're going to have all the gears correct four gears five gears in the respective power band which will elongate the power band and make it seem like continuous process continuous power flowing from the engine right which is actually not right so that's why gearbox is hiding the disadvantage of an engine and showing as if engine is capable of providing a continuous power right and that's also the reason why gearbox cost is pretty much higher than the engine cost because engine is incapable of delivering continuous power then gearbox kicks in and make the discontinuous power into continuous power at the power band level right so in addition to that we're going to look into four different arrangements of a powertrain right so we're going to go start from the convention all the way narrow down to what's possible what's practically possible and what's not right we'll start off with first engine directly connected to wheels is practically impossible think about it you just directly connecting the engine to wheels try to drive off what would you experience right you will experience a direct connection from the engine to wheels which is not good you want a disconnecting member right so this is not going to work right and the tricky part is engine power is going directly to the clutch and the wheels just try to think about it how this could be done you have an engine power is coming from the engine now you don't have a gearbox you don't have a gearbox you have only clutch and from there you're directly connecting to the wheels what would happen if you replace your existing setup to this setup in your vehicle just think about it now engine is already running and the clutch is being employed and the vehicle is there this is mostly used in a daily on day day to day basis such as your scooties mopeds they use this method of power train configuration you might have wondered how they are even doing it right is it automatic transmission or is it a cvt no the very simple answer to it that's centrifugal clutches all the scooties mopeds they use centrifugal clutch to transmit the engine output directly to the wheels without needing any gearbox in it how are they going to do it a centrifugal clutch works on a principle of whenever you you stay in idling rpm it doesn't 
get contact with the outer rpm or or the wheels side right so if you run beyond 1000 rpm or you rev the vehicle beyond 1000 rpm say you are under 1500 rpm now you are expanding it it starts getting contact to the outer surface hence it will transmit the power from the engine to the wheels that's mostly used automotive transmission in the third category second again think about it this time we are eliminating clutch engine the power is directly going to gearbox and then it's been connected to the wheels right take a pause think about it it's even possible to make a product with this design too you don't have a clutch now you don't have a clutch engine power is directly given to gearbox and followed by that it's going for the wheels yes it's possible there's only one product in this category i think which most of you might have not heard about that's tvs jive right that's the only one product which works on class 2 or category 2 right how it's even possible right so it's actually pretty simple you have an engine and you have an automated clutch so tvs jive you can stop at any gear corresponding to higher gear to lower gear you can stop at any gear and kick start your vehicle at any gear right so that's the added advantage that you get when you use this setup engine gearbox and the clutch is hidden and it's wheels right so it's kind of you know a bladeless fan still the uh, every uh, this new technology coming up right a bladeless fan is still have a fan which is hidden to you right hidden to the uh, customer but still you have an application right behind it that's the second category and third or the first one is going to be engine clutch gearbox this is what every vehicles in our uh, day to day life people are using it right but here comes the tricky part what we are going to do is we'll have an engine we'll swap the clutch here and take the gearbox back which means engine power is not going to clutch now engine from engine the power is drawn to gearbox and then the clutch and then the wheels what would happen if this is the case because this is how the convention is but what would we just swap bring the gearbox before the clutch what will happen in this case just try to reiterate rewire the concept that you have been thought the conventional way right so try to do it and you know try to bring come up with a logical answer which is which could be practically possible right so with that we are able to conclude this video i'll hope you to see in future videos thank you